Hello, my name is Joseph Valenti. Uh, I'm the Vice President of Education of the Lumberg Project, and today we're doing a video on Calculus One. Um, this is a course taught throughout many high schools um, and into the college level, especially if you go into engineering or even business. So the first topic we're going to talk about is derivatives. Now, a derivative, there's the first easy way to calculate this. So if you take an equation, 3x squared, right, which is a polynomial, um, it would look something like this, right, as you've seen in algebra classes. Um, so pretty much the derivative is the slope of the tangent line anywhere along the curve. So here we see the slope of the tangent line is negative. Um, here it would be zero, and here it would be a positive slope. Um, when you do rise over run, derivative is the same concept. Um, so when you take the derivative of 3x squared, this is called the power rule for derivatives. So you multiply the exponent times the base, which gets you 6, and then you decrease this number, the exponent, by 1. So it would be 6x to the 1, which is just 6x. Um, then there's a few memorization um, derivative rules. So Going into the memories, we have ln x, which is based on e, which is an exponential function, um, which equals the derivative is 1 over x. That's an example of one that you would memorize. Um, another graph that you see a lot would be a sine graph. Look something, if you do 0, pi over 2, which is a 90 degrees, um, then pi then 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi, or 360, or a full cycle. Um, you have a sine graph that's like this. Looks something like that, right? So if you take the derivative of the sine graph, you actually get the cosine graph. So the derivative of sine of x equals cos of x, right? And if you take the derivative of the cos of x graph, which is the actually the sine of x graph just shifted over, and you get the derivative of cos of x actually equals negative sine of x. Um, so any more things? So this is derivatives. So that's the product rule. Now, and some memorization. Another rule would be the uh, quotient rule. So if you take something where you want to take the derivative of something complex, if you take the derivative of 3x over 2x squared, right? You want to take the derivative of something like that. Or actually, to make it better, uh, we'll do 3x squared plus 2 over 2x squared plus 4, something like that, right? So the rule for uh, the uh, for the quotient rule would be how I like to think of it as bottom. Just write the bottom out times the derivative of the top, which as we learned, 3x squared just becomes 6x minus the top, which is the full top, times the derivative of the bottom. Same idea. Multiply the exponent by the base and decrease the exponential power by 1. So 2 minus 1 would be 1. So it would just be 4x over the bottom squared. So this is the bottom denominator squared. So it just becomes 2x squared plus 4 squared. So if you don't want to simplify it, you don't have to. But this is the fully written out version of this um, as the derivative of this function. <laughs> There's another rule, which instead of the power rule, it's called the product rule. Um, so that's if you're taking the derivative of when you're multiplying two different things. So if you have like, want to take the derivative of x plus 4 times 5x squared plus 2, it's the same concept as the quotient rule, but actually less complex. You don't have to do anything dividing with the bottom of the fraction squared. Um, it's actually just first times derivative of the second, right, same rules as earlier, plus, no minus this time, plus for the product rule, second, this is actually 5x squared plus 2, second 
times derivative of the first, which is just one. Now, when you have this, it's the same concept. You can just, to make it easier on yourself, it's one x raised to the one power. So you multiply one times one, one, decrease this exponent by one. So you get one x to the zero, which is just one. Um, and if you want to simplify this, you can get 10x squared plus 40x plus 5x squared plus 2. Combine like terms, 15x squared plus 40x plus 2, which equals dy over dx, which is another way of writing derivatives. You can write it as when you're given a function of f of x and y, which a lot of times you see functions as f of x, y. So a lot of times the way you could take a derivative is doing dy over dx, or you can write it as f prime of x, y is another way you could see a derivative. Okay. Um, so those are the main rules for taking derivatives. So you have the product rule, which was the first times the derivative of the second term plus the second times the derivative of the first term. Okay. So those are the main methods of doing um, derivatives. Um, those are the main methods. If you want to do um, more complex ones, there's a few you're going to have to memorize. Um, so then there's the chain rule. So a nice simple example of a chain rule would be sine of 2x. So going back to what we learned earlier, sine of x becomes cos of x. So it would be cos of 2x, right? So you do this first, but you're still left with the parentheses, right? You don't want to change anything in the parentheses. What you want to do with the parentheses section is you chain it. So you'd write cos of x, because the derivative of sine is cos, times 2. So you get 2 cos 2x equals the derivative. Um, so that's called the chain rule. Um, because the parentheses, you don't want to change anything in the parentheses um, when you're dealing with angles that are not just cos of x, sine of x, stuff like that. Um, to add, um, if you want to do another type of chain rule, so you have e to the x. If you actually take the derivative of e to the x, this is another memorization really no conceptual way of getting the derivative from it. Um, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Um, now that's another memorization knowing that e to the x becomes e to the x. But actually, this is actually a chain rule. Because if I have e to the x squared plus 1, you do e to the x squared plus 1 because the derivative of e to the something is e to the something. But you actually have to chain it because you still have this term up here, this exponent. So it actually becomes e to the x squared plus 1 times 2x. Same rule. This is, a, this is actually a product rule, or this is actually a power rule one, where you do um, base times exponent and then decrease the exponent by 1, getting you 2x. So you can get 2x e to the x squared plus 1 as the derivative of that. So again, that's combining multiple rules. You have the memorization rule of e to the x just being e to the something and then you chain it with whatever the exponent is. So if it's just e to the x, you're chaining with 1, which is the same thing as rewriting it. In this situation, you're chaining it with a product rule type of scenario. So that's another example of the chain rule, um, but actually combining multiple rules we talked about earlier. Um, another rule that's important with this is actually dealing with lns again. So we learned earlier, actually, ln of x is 1 over x. That's a memorization one that you just have to memorize. But actually, this is also a chain rule. You can look at it as like ln, usually write lns in absolute value signs, um, of x squared plus 1, right? So it's the same concept as e to the x. You kind of do 1, when you do ln of something, you do 1 over the something times the derivative of that something. So you actually get 2x over x squared plus 1. So you chain the something. So you think of do this to the something times the derivative of the something that you did. Um, so yeah, that's a basic 
um, introduction to derivatives, understanding that they're the slope of the tangent line anywhere on the curve. And if you actually want to get the specific point of the slope x actually on the curve, you can look at it um, by plugging in a point. If x is 3, just plug in x of 3 here. Um, and you can get the slope, dy over dx. OK. So now that we have an introduction to derivatives, um, there's one last derivative that can be a little confusing, is actually if you take like something like 5 to the x, which is just a number raised to an exponent, like 5 squared or something like that. But in this case, it's x. You actually do this. This is a number memorization one. You do the base raised to the x times the ln of the base. So it's actually the derivative of 5 raised to the x is 5 raised to the x times ln of 5. 5 comes from the base here. OK, so after going through that um, introduction derivatives, I think we can move on to some basic integration. So integration is just, it means area under the curve. Derivative is based on slopes, uh, rate rise over run. Uh, integrals are based on area under a curve. So going back to our parabola here, if I redraw it, it would be something like area under the curve from 0 to 3 would be this shaded under the curve here, right there. That would be the area under the curve for a graph like that from 0 to 3. Um, so when you're integrating, it's actually call, also called an antiderivative because it's the opposite of a derivative. So if I was taking um, the integral, going back to a simple uh, power rule example, which is, again, power rule, decrease the exponent by 1, multiply by the base. Um, if I do that type of an example, the integral of 6x um, would actually be the opposite. So it would actually go back to 3x squared. But the way you do an integral is you rewrite what you have, right? raise the power by 1, so you have 6x squared, divided by that new number for the exponent. So you get 6x squared divided by 2, which becomes 3x squared, which gets, that's what we had when we took the derivative. That's what we had to start with. So the simple basic integration rule, and the way you want to write integration of this, if you want to actually write it out in words instead of just doing the method, is you do a symbol like this. It's like a squiggly line. And yeah, you do a squiggly line that represents the parameters that you're integrating over. So if you're integrating from the bottom 0 to, let's say, 3, like I was kind of describing there, from 0 to a number of 6x. Now, in this case, you're doing it with respect to x, because that's the only variable we're working with. When you get to some upper level math courses, if you continue with math and you like math a lot, you go into multiple variables. Like a, You can even deal with y's and z's and other variables. Um, but with this, in calculus 1, the main thing is respect to x, um, one variable. Um, so make that x better. So when you're integrating, so this is the proper notation to write that. Um, 6, uh, same method, 6x squared. You raise the power by 1, divided by that new number, equals 3x squared. Now. The integral has the parameters, right? It's from 0 to 3, I'm saying here, right? So you want to do top number minus bottom number. Think top of bottom. Bo top minus bottom, OK? So you plug in the 3, 6 times 3, or that we wrote it actually a little nicer, 3x squared. You do 3 times 3 squared, which is 3 squared is 9, times 3 is 27, minus 0, because 3 times 0 squared is just 0. So the actually value of that integral evaluating from 0 to 3 is 27. Um, uh, and then an example, if you let's say you didn't have parameters um, with integration, which a lot of times you don't. We remove these. Same method. You do 6x squared over 2, which equals 3x squared. Now, because you don't have these parameters, you want to add um, equals 3x squared. Because you don't have these two parameters, you want to actually add this constant c. Don't forget your plus c's. Um, that shows that there's a constant there. 
because we can't determine a value. Um, you add that when you don't have the parameters of integration. We had zero and three earlier, but in this case, we just had a constant. We, we don't have any parameters, so you just add the constant. All right, thank you for watching. That was an introduction to some Calculus One topics. We talked about derivatives. Um, we talked about integration, um, integration with the product rule. Um, we can go more in depth with integration, but this is a good start. Make sure you understand derivatives.